الحمد لله على آلائه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في أرضه ولا في سمائه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد my audience here with me and my viewers at home السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to our program Ramadan Talk This is the second episode of the program and this year's program is coming to you from the University of Nottingham in the United Kingdom. In the last episode, we did some introductions about Ramadan and how it was made obligatory, the fasting and the benefit of fasting Ramadan and which year was the fasting made obligatory. And we said, inshallah, we're going to stick to Blue Gulmaram, a book of Blue Gulmaram in Jami Adilat al-Hakam. And today we're going to start from the chapter of fasting, Kitab al-Siyam, from the first hadith. Who can read for us? Go ahead. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تقدم رمضان بصوم يوم ولا يومين إلا رجل كان يصوم صوما فليصوم متفق عليه. أي the first hadith in this chapter he said كتاب الصيام the book of fasting and this we said is in بلوغ المرام written by ابن هجر أسكالاني almost eight hundred years ago he said عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال it is reported from Abu Huraira. In Arabic, Abu Huraira is called Kunya. When you said the father of Soso, the mother of Soso, uh, Arab, Arabs, they have a tradition that they, they feel shy to call the name of someone who is elderly. Then they give them Kunya. They said the father of Soso, the mother of Soso. So Abu Huraira is not a name, it's Kunya. His name is what? Who can? Uh -huh. Abdurrahman bin Sakhr. Uh, Abdurrahman bin Sakhr at Dawsi. And do you know why he's called Abu Huraira? He was called, he was given this name by the prophet, right? Why? Because uh, Abu Huraira used to have like a cat yeah. and uh, clothes and yeah. uh, Rasulullah used to tell him Abu Hir. So Abu that's Hir. what he got yeah. his kunya from. Yeah, the prophet used to call him Abu Hir and he used to call him Abu Huraira as well because he had a little cat with him all the time. His name is Abdurrahman bin Sahar. He is the most frequent reporter of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Among mm -hmm. all companions, he is the one who reported most of the hadith, radiallahu anhu, because he said, the reason, he said, because I have no farm and I have no business. And my, my friends from the migrants, from the Muhajirun, they are always busy with their businesses. And my friends from the Ansar, from the people of Medina, they are always busy with their palm, farms. So I, I have no farm, I have no business, I have no shop. So I'm always with the Prophet Wasallam. And once the Prophet Wasallam prayed for him uh, to have a good memory. And he had a good memory. Whatever he hears, he will memorize it. Sometimes when he narrates ahadis, somebody said, Abu Hurairah, you always narrate many ahadis, why do you do that? He said, who can remember what Imam read in Salatul Sub two days ago? Can you remember what Imam read in Salatul As uh, Salatul Ahadis? You cannot no. remember. He said, but I know what he read in so-so days. If he attends a prayer, after one month, after two months, he will tell you what the Imam read in that, uh, in that uh, prayer because he has a retentive memory. He reported that Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said La taqaddamu Ramadana bisawmi yawmin wala yawmain Do not fast a day or two days before Ramadan When Ramadan is starting on so-so date Don't start two days or one day fasting before that You cannot just say that Because Ramadan is on Monday I will start fasting from Saturday or I will start fasting from Sunday because I'm just used to it by the time the Monday comes I'm used to it the Prophet said don't do not do that illa rajulun kana yasumu sawman except if someone is in habit of fasting a day for yasumu then he shall fast it if fasting is on Friday for instance and you used to fast Thursdays you can fast Thursday and then you start Ramadan on on Friday but you cannot just say that I will fast a volunteer fasting a day or two days before Ramadan this is prohibited by the Prophet wasalam, because the wisdom in that is that in Islam, Islam wants you always to separate between suppurgatory act of worship and obligatory act of worship. When something is, is a sunnah, you cannot always join it with what is obligatory. When you said, I just want to fast sunnah, one day sunnah, and you just want to make it to be like uh, Ramadan is, is going to look like 31 days. That's why it's also prohibited to fast uh, at the day of Eid. 
mm-hmm. because you are making another day or another supplementary fasting with the obligatory one. You get how it works. In Islam, you have to make everything separate. The the obligatory things will be separate, and the the the, the also supplementary has to be separate. That's why when you finish salah, when you want to pray sunnah, you cannot pray in that position immediately. You have to change place. Mm-hmm. If you pray fard here, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Allah, awayajizu ahdukum an yataqaddama awa yataqhar aw an yaminhi aw an shimali." Why can't one of you who wants to pray sunnah after the obligatory prayer can't go a little bit forward or a little bit back? Back, you know, he he come back or a little bit on his uh, right hand side or on his left hand side. But you cannot pray in that spot immediately. You can pray in that spot after like making supplications five minutes, six minutes, then you can pray at that place if you don't have any option. But it's better to change the place. Also on fasting, it is prohibited to fast a day or two days before Ramadan, except if you are in habit already. I'm not fasting it just because um because it is uh, sunnah, I just want to do it. But I used to fast Mondays, I used to fast Thursdays, I used to fast a day and skip another day. Then if you are in habit of fasting, then you can do that. Muttafaqun alayhi. When he said Muttafaqun alayhi, is hadith reported by Bukhari and Muslim and is the most authentic hadith. We have seven levels of authentic hadith. Follow me. The first one is reported by Bukhari and Muslim. When hadith is reported by Bukhari and Muslim, it's called muttafaqun alayhi. Muttafaqun alayhi. That's the first step. Then the, followed by what is reported by Bukhari. Mm-hmm. Then followed by what is reported by Muslim. Mm-hmm. Then followed by what is what fulfills the conditions of Bukhari and Muslim, but it's not reported by Bukhari and Muslim. Mm-hmm. Then followed by what, what fulfills, you know, it's logical. What, what fulfills the condition of Bukhari, mm-hmm. but not reported by Bukhari. Then follows what fulfills the condition of Muslim, but not reported by Muslim. Then followed by hadith reported by other scholars like Abu Dawood, like uh, it's authentic hadith by Abu Dawood and Tirmizi. So the first level of authentic hadith is the one reported by who? By Bukhari and Muslim. And it's called what? Muttafaqun. Muttafaqun alayhi. So this hadith is Muttafaqun alayhi. There's no doubt on it. It's agreed upon that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, prohibited fasting uh, a day or two days before Ramadan. Do you understand this? Okay, next hadith. When Ammar ibn Yasir, radiallahu anhu, said, Man saw al yawm al-ladhi yushakku fihi faqad asa abal qasim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Zakarahu al-Bukhari ta'liqan wa wasarahu al-Khamsa wa sahahu ibn Khuzayma ibn Hibban. The second hadith reads on Ammar bin Yasir radiallahu anhu. This hadith is reported from Ammar bin Yasir. It's one of the early companions, one of the early believers. They accepted Islam in Mecca and they were tortured. Yeah. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to fast by him, being tortured and his family. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to say, Sabran ala yasir, inna ma'idakumul jannah. Ala yasir, persevere it. Uh, Allah promises you Jannah and you're going to get to Jannah is your land. You are about this Jannah because you are, you are, you are maltreated because of Islam. And uh, Ammar is one of the greatest companions. Uh, he reported from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, "Man shamal yom al ladhi yushakku fihi." Whoever fasts the day that is in doubt, fakad asa abal Qasim. He disobeyed the father of Qasim, is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We said kunya, right? Yes. Also, the kunya of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is abal Qasim. Abu Huraira is called Abu Huraira, but you know the name is what? The name of the Prophet is what? Is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the kunya is what? Abal Qasim. I told you it's the tradition of Arab that they they have kunya. So the uh, uh, Ahmad bin Yasser reporting for repro- that whoever fast the day that is in doubt he disobeyed the father of Qasim. So it's disobedience for the prophet to fast a day of doubt. Whenever there is doubt, abstain until when there is a legal announcement from the authorities that this is Ramadan. Then you fast Ramadan. Zakahul Bukhari Taliq and Bukhari reported it. Or Salahul Khamsa and five also the five are uh, Abu Dawood, uh, Tirmidhi, Nasai, Ibn Majah, and Ahmad. Uh, ibn Khudayma, ibn Hibban. So the next hadith. وعن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إذا رأيتموه فصوموا وإذا رأيتموه فافطروا فنغم عليكم فقدروا له متفق عليه. طيب أبو the next hadith is from Ibn Umar. Ibn Umar his name is Abdullah. Uh, he's one of the youngest of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu and he's one of the most frequent reporters of the hadith as well. Uh, when the Prophet Sallallahu died, he was about 20. But uh, mashallah, he memorized a lot of hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu May Allah be pleased with him. He said, Samitu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi I had his kunya also is Abu Abdurrahman. Almost all the companions have a kunya. His kunya is Abu Abdurrahman. He said, Samitu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi I had the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu saying, Idara Aitumuhu Fasumu. When you see the moon, fast. 
when you see it with your naked eyes wa idha ra'aytumuhu fa'tiru and when you see it break the fasting i mean when you when you fast 29 days and you see the moon break the fasting fa in gumma alaykum fakdru lahu if the the sky is cloudy then make an estimation the estimate the time estimate it to be 30 days do you understand mm -hmm. now if we are in which month is before ramadan shaaban if we are in shaaban and it is 29 days the 29th of shaaban we will start looking for the moon when it is sighted we will start fasting ramadan when it's not sighted when the, the, the sky is cloudy you will complete shaaban 30 days for the ruler then you start fasting ramadan mm -hmm. also when you fast the 29th of ramadan you will start looking at the moon sighting of the moon if the moon is sighted then you will drop the fasting and if the moon is not sighted is cloudy then you complete shaaban 30 days do you understand mm -hmm. wali muslim muttafaqun alayhi is also reported by bukhari and muslim wali muslim uh wali muslim fa in ugmi alaykum fa ugmi alaykum faqdiru lahu 30 وللبخاري فاكملوا العده 30 وله في حديث ابي هريره فاكملوا عدته وله في حديث ابي هريره رضي الله عنه فاكملوا عده شعبان 30 all in all these versions in bukhari and muslim fa in ugmi alaykum faqru lahu 30 when the sky is cloudy make an estimation make the month 30 days then start fasting the next day and uh, in faakmilu idda 30 and complete the the the, the days to be 30 days now that's the ruling basically because the muslims in the early days they were not astronomers they are not they, don't, they have no knowledge of astrology they don't know they, they, are, they don't know anything about sciences so they used to uh sight for moon with naked eyes when the moon is seen then they will fast when they couldn't see the moon they know it's 30 days then they will just make the the current moon 30 days then they will start fasting the next the next month do you understand this mm -hmm. this is where we're going to uh, stop today uh but i don't know let, let's just make a recap we read three ahadith today right mm -hmm. the first one in hadith of abu huraira we said abu huraira is kunya what is the name abdurrahman bin sakhar and he's the most frequent reporter of the hadith from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we said right mm -hmm. he said there is a prohibition to fast a day or two days uh before ramadan right mm -hmm. unless there's an exception what is the exception you know, frequent fast yeah if you have in habit of fasting then you can fast because you are fasting it because it's monday not because you just want to fast a day before ramadan you are fasting because it's thursday and you used to fast thursdays not because it's just a day before ramadan then the second hadith is from ammar bin yasir radiyallahu anhu the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever fast the day that is in doubt he disobeyed the father of qasim who is the father of qasim we said prophet, prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so there's a prohibition of fasting uh, a day that is in doubt unless you are certain that this is ramadan authorities have made announcement then you can fast then the third hadith from abdullah ibn umar that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said fast it when you see the moon and also break the fast when you see the moon if the sky is cloudy you make an estimation to fast 30 days mm -hmm. is that understood mm -hmm. any question mm. what are the benefits of fasting mondays and thursdays throughout the year well there are benefit because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to fast mondays and thursdays and he said uh, in in some narrations he said uh, the actions the works of bani adam will be raised to allah on mondays and thursdays and he said i want my 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 works my actions to be paraded to allah while i'm fasting so that i will get a favor upon that So it's a great benefit and you know fasting in general will expiate your sins. Jazakallah. Also mm. uh, according to a hadith mm. so at the time of the companions or the Allah mm. anhum mm. they used to search for the moon for the fasting of Ramadan. Mm. Nowadays we have scholars who see the moon and scholars who count for a calendar so mm. what what is the most correct way to Inshallah we're going to discuss it in the next episode inshallah. Uh -huh. Till we meet in the next episode I wish you happy fasting may Allah accept our ibadah wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi